Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and for my book, Stunning Digital Photography, I'd like to show you the four different types of light in traditional portrait work. Now, the first light I'd like to show you is the main light, and the main light front lights your subject. Uh, when you're outdoors, this is probably going to be the sun, or it could be a reflector that you're holding in front of your subject. If you have the flash on, the flash is going to be your main light. So I'll take a picture with just the main light now. Now looking at that picture, you'll see really harsh transitions from bright to dark. That's because we just have one light and absolutely no fill light. So if we want to soften those shadows, we're going to add some fill. Now I have the main light off to camera left and I have the fill light behind me here off to camera right. So what I'll do now is turn on this fill light and then take a second picture with the fill light on. So as you can see by adding fill, you still have some of that dramatic light and you can still see the light from the main light, but it's a much more of a traditional portrait. Now you control how much fill there is in a portrait and the more fill you have, the more soft the picture is going to look, the more traditional the portrait is going to look. If you take all that fill away, you're going to be left with very harsh and dramatic lighting and it's entirely up to you the effect that you want to go for. With no fill, you get these kind of like deep and intense portraits and if you add plenty of fill, you get a softer mood, a lighter mood. Now let's add in a third light, which is the hair light. The hair light is particularly important for subjects that have dark hair like Chelsea. If you have somebody with light hair or <laughs> white hair like me, you might find it quickly becomes way too bright and looks a little blown out. So I'll turn on that hair light and take another picture of Chelsea. The hair light is typically positioned behind and above the subject, but pointing down at them. You'll see behind me that the hair light has a snoot on it. The snoot helps to focus the light beam, and it just basically prevents the light from spilling everywhere else in the picture and potentially adding in some unwanted light. So the fourth light in this set is the background light. Now in these pictures so far, the background has been completely black, and maybe that's the effect you want to go for. But if you're working with a white backdrop, if you don't have a light on it, it's going to turn out gray. Throw in that background light and it's going to become bright white. With a black backdrop like this, when I turn on the background light, it's going to go from completely black to gray. Typically the background light is pointed behind the subject's head and if you're working in a low key environment like I am, you might put a grid on it to prevent the light from spilling everywhere else. So I'll go turn on that background light and we'll take another shot. I set up that background light to illuminate a spot right behind Chelsea's head. This makes the background more interesting instead of just being a solid color. To make sure that it shows up in only a single spotlight, I put a grid on the strobe. The grid just blocks any light that's headed out at any kind of an angle. Only light that's headed straight through the grid will show up on the backdrop. You can use grids with different density cells to control just how much the backdrop spreads. Now, I told you this would be a four light shoot and I'm gonna throw a fifth light in there, a kicker light. I just attached a flash to a light stand because I don't happen to have a fifth light. So I will put this behind Chelsea and show you what an extra kicker light can do. Kicker, do you really think that's appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> This is for real. You can see that kicker light is helping to separate Chelsea from the background further by illuminating the hair on the camera left side of her face. Some of the light is also falling onto her face and helping to accentuate her features a little bit. Now you don't need five lights for every portrait that you do. Often you can just put somebody next to the window and that window would be your main light and then hold up a reflector and that will be your fill light. You might not need any background light or any hair light at all, but I do want you to be familiar with the different types of light. 
If you like this video, I hope you'll click like and subscribe down below to see more. And of course, six more hours of video just like this in stunning digital photography. And that number is always growing because we're always improving the content. We're keeping it up to date as software and photographic techniques change. And we're always adding new video, most of which never goes on YouTube. It just goes straight into the book. You can buy it directly from us at stunningdigitalphotography.com or of course you can go to Amazon or just about any other bookstore. Thanks so much.